Sky Joe is the code name for America's daring, highly trained special mission force. Its purpose, to defend human freedom against COBRA, a ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. Well, Kieran, thank you for visiting me in the store for once. Uh, been here alone for a while. And you brought all this G.I. Joe shit. Yeah. Uh, and, and thanks for sitting a little bit apart from me. Yeah. Um, I think we have to... Be, hold on. How long is a VHS tape? Seven, five inches. So we need to be about ten of these apart. Can ten you hold VHSs? These? Yeah. Okay. From our mouths. From our mouths, yeah. Can you hold that one? That's close. It's about there. All right. I'm fine. I'm fine dropping, dropping the shields. We've only seen really each other anyway, so yeah, you know. And you live alone in an apartment with your cats. Yeah, so that's about it. I've, I haven't really said any real actual words to any people either. Like you're, I've literally been talking to cats for several weeks. You're no risk. And uh, oh, there's James. James, how are you doing in this uh, pandemic uh, quarantine over there in your store? Uh, d doing okay, you know, hanging in there like everybody. Yeah, that's good. And Kieran, you have a beard, so that probably keeps you safe a little bit. No, I don't. Oh, you cut, I cut my beard. Well, you trimmed your beard. It looks nice. Yeah, I just mm. cut it. I well, I shaved it off uh, four weeks ago, but it's kind of grown a bit back. Use that lawnmower 2.0 from Manscaped.com to shave it. Right after shaving my fucking bush. <laughs> no, I'm just. I haven't used it. I I, I only uh, used it on my uh, on my face. It's a really good beard trimmer if you're not using it on your dick hair. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so James, Kieran brought all this GI Joe shit in. Do you want to talk about GI Joe? Yeah. Well, you know what's really strange is that in this entire video store, I don't think I have a single GI Joe tape of any kind. Would you believe? I, I looked around here. Um, I don't think we have GI Joe the movie on VHS either. Like we, like Karen has all these. I think this is a DVD. Yeah, set. I have. I have mainly DVDs, but I also do have a lot of VHSs at home. I have a lot of like the actual like old big box ones they got too. Yeah. Uh, and I have the movie, and I have like a few that are just you know released. Uh, just randomly. Black I have some here. weird uh, oddities here. I guess. Do you guys want to see these before we get into the movie? Or sure. All right, so, well, first, I guess I'll start off. This is uh, G.I. Joe Resolute. Uh, it's a, it was a five-minute, like, web series. Like, they released about ten of them, I think. And they were five-minute episodes that you would have to watch online. It came out right before the new movie did in, like, 2009, I think. And uh, it's awesome. It's basically uh, G.I. Joe, but way more mature. It's, it has actual death and guns and... Uh, it has an awesome fight between Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. Mm. Uh, probably the greatest, like, ever seen in, you know, some sort of media. One of my prized possessions of G.I. Joe collecting, it's the entire uh, 1991 Impel trading card series, uh, which took me a really long time to collect because I couldn't find one character. Actually, Fast Draw right here. It's the only card I only have one of. And then right here is my pride and joy, my crown jewel of my G.I. Joe collection. It's the uh, Shout Factory uh, full series on DVD. Right. And it comes in this really sweet foot locker. Yeah, was that like a like a fishing bait? Like, um, or like, like you know, fishing? Box? Yeah, tackle box, yeah. No, it's, it's supposed to be like a military foot locker, but when you open it up, it has like a fake computer, like a G.I. Joe kind of communication thing and you pull it up and it's got these books uh of you know 10 dvds or so it's got like a uh, like a little program guide of all the episodes it's got a thing of uh temporary tattoos mm. you got the gi joe the cobra and the arashikage ninja symbol which is uh snake eyes and storm shadows thing and then it also has a usb dongle like uh dog tag that has a whole bunch of uh, comic books and stuff. I also have a, a Cobra symbol tattoo. It's my only tattoo. Oh, like on you? Yeah, it's on my right arm. Is it temporary? No, it's real. Oh, so you have a real Cobra. It's tattoo. really like uh, old though. I got it in like 2000. I got it like actually like 11 years ago. I, I was gonna ask you if you're a big uh, G.I. Joe fan. Uh, that definitely answers it. 
yeah, these are only a few of the things I got too. I used to have a ton of the figures. My original figures all got burned in a fire. Oh. Uh, yeah, there was a, did, uh, did an Co electrical fire at my at my dad's house like when I was a kid. Did Cobra cause the fire? Yeah, maybe he did. <laughs> I, I guess James, like, do you like G.I. Joe this fucking much? I, I don't, I see this is one of those moments where I have to confess like, I don't know anything about G.I. Joe, like nothing at all. Um, I, I, for no good reason, I think it was just that I had so many other things that I was uh, occupied with. Um, I was huge on Transformers, and then after Transformers, I think I went on to Ghostbusters, uh, the real Ghostbusters, and then uh, uh, Ninja Turtles probably after that. Um, so I don't know, G.I. Joe, I mean, it was one of those Hasbro properties, um, but I was actually into Inhumanoids. Uh, Mark, and, and nobody remembers in humanoids. I mean, this this right here. I mean, this is this is a bootleg. This isn't. I don't even know if they made a real DVD for it. It was only 13 episodes. They never made another one. But I, at first, I thought you were talking about the uh, um, Herculoids. Oh, the, like gleeping. The, yeah, with the the what's it called? The Hanna Barbera cartoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was a big GI Joe kid and, and Turtles. I think I kind of aged out of Transformers and um, Thundercats. Yeah, I guess, or I just wasn't really that I, into them. I was never super into Transform. I like Transformers. They're cool. I think the toys are cool, but I never got into the stories. I uh, I was super into Ninja Turtles, but then I got into GI Joe because of an older cousin, and I thought GI Joe was just. Like, I, I first was super into Ninja Turtles and everything was cool, but when I saw these were more, like, realistic and they were, like, people and ninjas and they were there were yeah. some monsters, but there was guns. I thought that was, like, what was kind of cool. Yeah, I had a ton of the toys and I would always, um, like, twist them too much and the little rubber thing yeah. would break inside of them. The, or... the weird little dick would break off, the thumbs would break off so they wouldn't hold weapons anymore. They, they were kind of annoying. They were always hanging out with my Ghostbusters and... Uh, I was always sad because they're like way shorter than like a Barbie doll, yeah. and and I had three sisters, so I had all these like giant play sets and pink houses, and the GI Joes couldn't hang out there. I wish I brought them, but I also have GI Joe Extreme action figures, which were the '90s. Uh, after GI Joe was kind of like going through, it, they tried to make bigger ones. First, they made Sergeant Savage, which was uh, he was like a four and a half inch figure instead of a three point seven five inch figure. Right. Uh, and then they made G.I. Joe Extreme, and those were more like the X-Men figures. Like, they actually were articulated the same as X-Men. That's the thing, like, what's kind of crazy is the action figures now have an insane community. There's people who make their own custom guns. Oh, yeah, and there's, like, there was that convention, I think, it just shut yeah. down. And, and, you know, our friend uh, Kevin from SEO Toy Review yeah. is huge in that, and Pixel Dan and all those other people. Like, G.I. Joes are still a big oh, thing. Oh, they're, they're huge, because they, I mean, people bought the, uh, when the 25th anniversary line came out, it... You know, people are still yeah. clamoring for those even today. Um, I, I think we, we're going to talk about the uh, the GI Joe movie. Yeah, like like, do you know any like, like like you know this movie, right? I've seen this movie. It's up there with all the other ones: Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. Like I've seen this movie so many times. Yeah, uh, yeah. But you guys, I guess I I'm kind of interested to. I I always like when someone who hasn't seen this movie talks to me about it because it is something that not many people were into. I guess. Yeah. So it's always cool to see a new perspective of, of What do you mean like not not many people saw the movie or what? Well, not not many people I know. I mean, I can talk to to a few people like Kevin or or Adam. That's the those are the only people that really come to mind that I can like sit there and and we really um, were into before it. Before I rewatched this, uh I just remember really the opening which I'll talk about in a bit, but like James, are you familiar with GI Joe and everything like at all? No. I I I didn't know a damn thing about it, but uh but even though I didn't know anything about it, I think it's what I mean is I don't really like have seen the show. Like I was familiar with the theme song, I was familiar with the logo and and the the PSAs. Like all that was so iconic back then. So even for me, uh, not having watched it, I still knew what it was. But I've yeah. never seen. I don't think I've ever watched an episode or seen the movie until now. This is my first time, and I think I would have really liked it as a kid. So I, you know, I I missed. Uh, Missed out on that one, so what can you do? <laughs> the opening of the film is amazing. Yeah. It, it, it's almost like a Broadway play. It's like a set piece where everyone fights around it. Like, he flies um, up to the statue and he puts the flag in it and like all that stuff's happening. Like, it, it is pretty cool. Yeah, it's, there's so much going on. And it, that itself is, yeah. is almost better than the entire rest of the movie. Which is crazy because the TV show has this great 
opening already. Mm -hmm. And this is like 10 times better. I mean, considering that, like, kind of like how the X-Men has this awesome opening in America, but in Japan, they made it even oh, better. Oh, yeah, yeah. And considering, I think this movie was done by Toei Animation or Toei or whatever. Uh, so it's like... I Sunbo? No, Sun, Sun, Sunbo does the TV Sun, show. Sunbo worked with them on this, but I think Toei okay. did all, all that did shit. Did all the main Pretty stuff. sure. Okay. Um, though the, the opening animation does look a little different than the animation in the, the, the actual movie, but I'm not The, um, the animation sure. compared to the TV show is still, like, way better. Well, There's just... Uh, same thing with X-Men. Yeah. It, it's like uh, Transformers the movie. Like, it has to step it up. The animation has to look better, uh, which is what that, that one did. Because I, I know for me, like, seeing Transformers the movie, it was like huge difference it was like wow that's the show now this is the movie um so do you feel like this one does the same for gi joe like it it takes it up to a new uh level for me yeah definitely i think uh the the characters all the plots that are going on it, it's for me this movie it never feels slow it always feels like something is happening and then the way it all kind of culminates into this giant battle at the end and and yeah. all the characters come together and and I just think it works super well. I think because of they added so much new blood, and we'll get into that, um, they kind of threw a lot of the established characters to the the, the floor, kind of like like you know um, Lady Jane and um, Scarlet and a few of those, and even Snake Eyes barely does anything in this yeah. movie. They kind of threw those guys they around. They kind of get but... captured in the beginning, and then it's because you know all the GI Joes get captured. Yeah. These new guys have to come in who aren't really trained yet, and they have to come in and step up and that's basically too because they wanted to sell you yeah. new toys and new characters uh so they introduce all these new guys and, and they need to make them look as cool as the original dudes were right. uh, oh yeah so that's the the other thing i guess uh about the intro of the movie is it was originally supposed to be the climax of the movie okay. and it was like one of the first things that they i think they finished the beginning of the movie before they finished anything else so when they saw it, it didn't make any sense anymore because the story had changed and gone all, you know, crazy after a while. So they were just like, I ah, just throw it in the beginning and make it the intro. And it ends up making you just I, I feel like it pumps you up for this movie better than any. I, I don't think like there's ever been an intro to a movie that is as is better than the rest of the movie. Is really. I, I have showed people uh, this. Um Instead of the whole movie. Like, yeah. here, just watch this. Oh, yeah, you You're can... Done. Honestly, that's... It's the best part of the movie, is the intro. The rest of the movie's great, but the intro, seriously, is is amazing, and it's yeah. awesome. The song is awesome. Because uh, it's not the regular G.I. Joe theme. The yeah. re regular one is that, like, the fight for freedom, whatever, no trouble. You know, yeah. it's kind of mer... And, then, you know, this is like a Broadway, a Broadway music where it's like, Cobra. Yeah. It's, it's serious. I mean, they use the main part of the G.I. Joe theme in it, right? Because that's... that's yeah, like, well, like, at the, like, they like, use the words, but the G.I. Joe's actual TV show theme is completely different. It's more... It sounds more like a like a military march. It's the... Dun, 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 dun. You know that cooking. Yeah, dude. Yeah, uh. Pork chop sandwiches. Oh shit! Get the fuck out of here! What are you doing? Go! Get the fuck out of here, you stupid idiot! I, I remember the early internet videos where they would redub the GI Joe PSAs and stuff. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah, those are incredible. Like the pork chop sandwiches. Yeah, that's yeah. like. <laughs> we did one actually for a brand deal. Me and Tony. Uh, we we did the you know I oh we're making we referenced it and stuff but. Oh no! My pork chop sandwiches are on fire! Those are classic internet, you know? I was watching those, I mean, before there was YouTube and everything. Yeah, it was before YouTube, for sure. Um, I can't remember exactly when it was, but um, definitely before YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and it was like, none of them made any sense, but that was why, why they were funny. Um, but yeah. I, I remember one part where, like, they did the the original, you know, they did the song in the beginning, but then it just goes, G.I. Joe! And they just hold it for a really long time. <laughs> it's like three minutes or something. Those videos really did kind of bring a resurgence back. Yeah. You know, that, you know, because G.I. Joe is was huge, and then it dropped off the face of the earth for years. They were making figures, but it was like, no one cared. Hasbro was really pumping out Transformers, and then... 
this came back and it kind of revitalized, even though there, there were joke internet videos, they really did revitalize it. So, all right, so this is one of those movies where I don't know what the hell happened <laughs> in order to, you know, I couldn't explain the plot because it's just 80s overload. Uh, which is what a lot of those were like, you know. I, I know so. you're the expert, Kieran, but I'll try to explain it to James, if, okay. that, if that's okay. I'll fill in the holes if, if need be. Um, you know, so Cobra Commander and Serpentor have failed time and time again uh, to rule the world, so even better guys show up. Well, they're technically not mad at Serpentor, they're mad at Cobra Commander. They feel like Cobra Commander is the one screwing Serpentor over. Okay, so they, so these, guys, these, these new bad guys come and they are from the land of Cobra Law, which is under the Himalayan mountains. They're technically not new, they're actually the engineers behind Cobra. They've been hiding out for 40,000 years after an ice age like ruined the society, is that correct? Yes. Uh, and they need they need the BET. Yeah. Uh, the broadcast <laughs> energy transmitter, uh, which G.I. Joe created, they created to solve the energy crisis. Yeah, it's, it's basically, it it makes energy just broadcasted to well, machines. You that, don't need to plug it into anything. That's, that's kind of like Tesla's original yeah, idea. It's not the exactly. car company, the guy. Um, okay, so that's horrifying. Uh, and they need that energy from the BET to activate rocket spores that they're going to use to launch all over the world to turn everyone and all the humans and the hideous yeah. monsters to take over. Basically to incubate them in space. So they're going to launch these rockets into space that devolve humans into, like, apes. So kind of like in uh, uh, Super Mario Brothers, the movie. Yeah, the pretty much. The evolution gun. Because that's the thing, like, basically what it is is, you know how... So in Super Mario Brothers, the movie, how there's the people who evolve from dinosaurs and we evolve from apes... Uh, these people did too. They this, they evolved from snakes and stuff. That's why, and instead of using technology, they use biotech. So everything that they have, right. that's why like their planes are gross. Yeah, you know monsters. Wasps everything. And, yeah, everything's yeah, nasty. Slugs. So so that's what's going on. Uh, do you know unless you want to add anything here? Well, so the only other thing I guess I'll say is that the, there's a, a little thing in it where you know because Serpentor, of course. He was in the second season of G.I. Joe. He was out long before this movie, but they kind of retcon a thing in it where uh, Galobulus, who is uh, the main bad guy, mm -hmm. says uh, that he implanted the idea into Dr. Mindbender to create Serpentor because he was dissatisfied with Cobra Commander. Okay. But Cobra Commander knows all of the the people. Like He was sent out by Galobulus to conquer Earth and just did a shit job. Right. So they're like, dude, you suck. Get out of here. So there's the plot, James. <laughs> oh, God. But when you watch it, it's like, you know, something's happening every second. It's like one of those. So it's like even explaining it like that doesn't really explain it. You know what I mean? So I'm guessing they rounded up most of the villains and characters from the show. Was that what they did here? Kind of like Batman the movie? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they also added a bunch of... They, bu uh, they added a well, bunch of new toys, yeah, I guess. Yeah, they added... So, the the all the main villains in the show are in it. Like, the, the but they didn't really add too many other than the Cobra Law people. They added Pythona, Galobulus, uh, the guards, the weird guys that are like, la, 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 and then yeah. uh, Nemesis Enforcer. Yeah. And those are the only Cobras that they added, but with G.I. Joe, they added like almost 20 new G.I. Joes to this. Uh, and this was basically a way of them making, uh, you know, getting, kind of phasing out older figures and making new ones because people didn't want to keep buying version three of Duke or version four of Snake Eyes. Because that, if you look at the original lines, there's like five different Snake Eyes. A bunch of Dukes, a bunch of Scarlets, uh, you know, they're, they just repainted them. But, but but then they make an asshole like uh, Lieutenant Falcon, who's one of the main characters in the film. Yeah, who's played by Don Johnson. Uh, Miami Vice. He, he, he's Duke's half-brother. Yeah. And he's an asshole. He's a dick, yeah. And but he's, he's cool at the end. And like, when he's not busily, uh, busy uh, sexually harassing what's-her-nuts. Um, Jinx. Jinx. Yeah. He's out ruining everyone's day and, and pretty much gets, spoiler alert, uh, spoiler alert, gets Duke killed. Yeah. Killed. So, But by that time, he's like in it because he goes through a whole redemption arc and there's no real redemption arc in G.I. Joe. He's the first to kind of have like, you know, the, all G.I. Joes are always elite dudes and they're always the best of the best. But this is a guy who is, you know, shitty and he realizes the that he's part of this team that has to save the world and he has to do it. Yeah. But uh, they added 
a ton of people. And it was probably really tough to add the Cobra Law guys because they're all biological monsters. Yeah. It's like an H.R. Geiger, uh, Clive Barker kind of like fuck. You know, they yeah. couldn't make those into toys. The thing about the thing about like Cobra figures are they always kind of make troop builders. Like they don't they make like generic dudes that you could buy multiple of because you want to buy like. You know, you want to have several soldiers of the same guy. Do you think it hurt the movie at all that it didn't get released in theaters? That it was just like straight to, what was it, straight to TV or straight to video? I, of course, a little bit, but I don't think, uh, I don't think it hurt the reception of the movie. But it, it's all like a big shit show as to what happened with it. Yeah, because, uh... Because, you know, with Hasbro, they also have Transformers and My Little Pony yeah. that came out a year before, even though they were working on G.I. Joe for... They were working that. on G.I. Joe for way longer, but Don Johnson was being, you know, a Hollywood dickhead, screwed up a bunch of shit with the movie, and just for the record, uh, before Optimus Prime was killed, they had the idea for Duke getting killed. The writers of... of Transformers took the idea because they were like, wow, that's a great idea. We'll do it with Optimus Prime. Yeah. Uh, because of all the delays in the movie with Don Johnson and everything, Transformers came out, Optimus Prime died, parents are freaking out. So now you have executives going, hey, you can't kill Duke anymore. Screw that. Like, forget it. And they're like, well, we made the movie. It's done. So they just voice So they put that throwaway line where Duke went into a coma and then they put another throwaway line at the end. But if you watch the movie and you just like, I want to release like a GI Joe, like S- original cut. cut, yeah, like, and just get those two lines out of it. Because if you if if Duke dies, it's super emotional. He gets he gets impaled through the heart by a by a spear cobra from Serpentor. Right, blood shoots out of him. Which I have to say, I was I was like really shocked when I saw it. So I was like, wow, this movie has gore. Um, he gets impaled. He gets straight up impaled, and then it it completely looks like he's gonna die. And then they just add in the lines that he was like in a coma and that he's gonna recover and everything's gonna be fine. I heard there was even a funeral scene that they cut. Yeah, there was supposed to be. Uh, I don't think it made it in the final cut. And also because especially after they, you know, Hasbro's like get rid of it, they didn't do it. But yeah, and well, they, they wanted to go for I think a PG thirteen rating, and they yeah. had not like a nude scene, but they had like an undressing scene with uh, uh, what the hell's her name, Zorana, Zorana, yeah, um, and a few other things like that. So I think they wanted to make it more for like adults and kids. But when they had to move it to TV because Transformers and My Little Pony the movie failed, mm. um, they put it on TV in one shot, and then they also broke it up into five separate episodes, which I think the movie kind of needs because after a while you're just like, all right. Okay. It's a lot. It's, it, it, there's so many things going on in it. Um, so, so also, you know, because this is my first time seeing anything G.I. Joe, I assume Duke is like, he's like the Optimus Prime of G.I. Joe. Pretty much, yeah. He's like the main character. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you know who I thought the main character was up until now? Who? Same Joe. <laughs> Joe? <laughs> Joe? <laughs> well, I, think, I, I think, think that's the team. Like, they're the, the G.I. Joe's. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I didn't know. That. Like a blunt name from like the, uh, the it's, 60s. Yeah, I. It's weird. I. I don't know. I think Joe is Joe Colton, apparently, who is Bruce Willis in the newest movie, and oh. he is. He's supposed to be the original GI Joe. Yeah, because I know they come from the original toy lines, which I think were were they World War Two? It was like forties or 50s? it was like yeah, sixties, sixties. So 60s? like Vietnam and and like yeah. they were Marines and soldiers and stuff like that. So, Kieran, you mentioned him a little bit earlier, but uh, the character Nemesis Enforcer, I remember when that name came up, that brought back a memory, uh, because I remember one time you were telling me something about Nemesis Enforcer, that it was a band or something like that. Yeah, there's... uh, (laughs) It's a good name. No, that's the thing, like, we were... I forget, I think you brought... Did you bring up the band, or... uh... Like, I think we were just talking about, like, badass names... Like Nem- Nemesis Enforcer is, is such a badass name that it doesn't really make sense. Like what you're enforcing Nemesis, whatever. But but it just sounds cool, and it's like one of those things that you that you'd never hear except in an '80s movie like this. Yeah. yeah. No, I always wondered where that name came from. He was somebody that always stood out too because he's huge. Uh, he yeah. he gives everybody a really hard time. Even uh, what's it called? <laughs> he gives everyone a hard time. Well, like yeah. Sergeant what Slaughter is the one who has to come in and defeat Nemesis Enforcer. Like he makes everybody else look like bitches. 
Yeah. Uh, especially too when when they're in the tank, the weird lay down tank that I always hated as a kid. Yeah. Because they they have to lay on their stomach to drive it, which is weird. But he like you know he does the thing with his elbow and tears through it. Yeah, and, he can like rip I, things. Yeah. I think it was Snow Job is in there and he's like ah help <laughs> like Nemesis yeah. Enforcer. So the thing with with him is um. The band that came out, I guess they had the, the copyright. So when when Hasbro was releasing the figures in 2009, they came out with a two pack and it came with a comic and it was uh, Falcon and Nemesis Enforcer. But he was called Nemesis Immortal because they lost the oh. copyright. And I remember being like, Nemesis Immortal, like, what the hell? Like, I'm pretty sure it was Enforcer, but they lost a bunch of copyrights. There was a bunch of changes. I mean, Nemesis Enforcer, he looks like if Archangel from X-Men had sex with um, (laughs) Juggernaut and they had a baby. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Because he's just like this beefy, like, scariest thing. And oh, and the one toy, it might be one you're talking about, he has wings. Like, in the movie, he has these giant wings that he uses to deflect lasers. Oh, the original toy? They're, They're like this small. The original toy, yeah, he has tiny wings and he also has, like, weird tentacles. Yeah. Uh, which I don't understand the tentacles. I don't know where they came from, but uh, actually, too, the Galobulus figure is really funny because he's just a torso with like a weird bendy snake body. That's it. Yeah. But uh, no, they like they. That's the thing was like they re, when they re released the figure, he was awesome. Like they made him taller. He's huge. He has the giant spikes coming out of his elbow, and his wings are like huge wings. Uh, but they 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 had he's, to call him Nemesis weird. Immortal, which was weird. Everyone from uh, Cobra Law, Shangri La, Shithole Land, yeah, um, they, Cobra they, Law. they they all have like different powers, and they all seem like they're different toys or whatever mixed in the same universe. Like 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 Nemesis Enforcer sounds like he's like a bad guy from the Gargoyles cartoon. Yeah, not this. Well, he also like screeches, like he doesn't yeah. say words. He's just like, Bleh. even though everyone else can. And Globulus is like a snake guy. And yeah, she's, like they're all like different. He, 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 he Pythona has those acid like yeah. tipped fingers and, and stuff. I guess Nemesis Enforcer is a bat. I guess they're all like weird. Yeah, well, that's the thing. They all evolved out of like you know weird animals i guess i don't understand why he's like a bat if they're all snakes well i like when uh, the sokoba commander gets turned into a snake in the movie yeah and the entire movie he's like i was once a man yeah i was a man yes oh yes i was a man i was a man Stop that. You hear you making me crazy. I was He's hanging out with man. Roadblock the whole time. Yeah, and, and they're like a uh, road trip across. Yeah, uh, and Roadblock always camp. rhymes. That's the whole thing. Roadblock rhymes every time he talks and stuff. Yeah. I always like Roadblock. He's kinda like, he's, I think he's like supposed to be their Mr. T. Yeah, kinda. pretty much. Yeah, he yeah. well, he's like he's the machine gunner. Like yeah. he's the heavy, you know, gunner dude. I, but to bring up the I was once a man thing, I know uh, C Lab twenty twenty one on a uh, uh, Adult Swim yeah. used to it. Yeah, they had a whole thing where the snakes like I was once a man, and they're like shut up, and he's like just kidding, I was always a snake. <laughs> yeah, and he like hides. <laughs> I thought that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Uh, we need to start a fire. My name was Larry. Ah! I'm just kidding. I've always been a snake. Uh, nice talking to you, Larry. Yeah, one of the cool things about a lot of these uh, animated action films in the 80s mainly is that uh, you can recognize all these voice actors that you didn't know who they were the first time you saw them as a kid. And uh, this movie, well, of course, seen it my first time. I was really surprised to see Burgess Meredith doing the voice of one of the villains, uh, Galobulus. And just to imagine him doing the voice for this character, it's it's so interesting because, I mean, he's done the Penguin. He's done, like, all kinds of different uh, characters. But there's something always cool about, like, uh, you know, Orson Welles, how he did the voice in Transformers of uh, Unicron. Uh, how... Back then, they would they they would get a, a really um, uh, well versed actor like a like a a celebrity who's who's had a, a long career, and they'll have them play a character in this, which the kids probably don't know who that is. I, I doubt a lot of the kids who watch this knew who Burgess Meredith was. And a lot of times in uh, modern movies that are animated, a lot of times they'll have a celebrity voice a character who looks like them or like they make the character look kind of like the celebrity um whereas back then they would do something like this where it's just completely unexpected where 
you know, the character who Burgess Meredith is voicing is, is like this monster, this big, like strong, you know, like monster. And you wouldn't imagine like an elderly man doing this voice, but it works so well. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean, you could say that about most of the Transformers, um, and, and a lot of the uh, GI Joes too, mm-hmm. um, except for Sergeant Slaughter, of course. Yeah. yeah. So Sergeant Slaughter, I have a question. How did he go from being a wrestler to being a character in an animated action cartoon? Sergeant Slaughter left the WWF to be a GI Joe. It wasn't like... Uh, he couldn't do both? No, because... So the thing is, WWF had... I think at the time, they were with LJN toys. LJN. Yeah, we know. LOL. Uh, what's it called? So Hasbro came to him and we're like, Hey, you know, you're Sergeant Slaughter. We'd love to have you as a G.I. Joe. Because Sergeant Slaughter is like a real Marine, I think, too. Like, he was really in the military. And uh, he was like, yeah, I'd love to. But remember, I'm the real G.I. Joe. Like... Basically saying, like, I'm not going to be a character. I'm Sergeant Slaughter in G.I. Joe. Yeah. And uh, he went, he met with them. They loved the idea about it. He went back to Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon was like, no, you can't do it. Like, if you're part of here, I can't remember if they were with LJN Toys still or if they were with uh, Mattel at that time, which Mattel is like the biggest competitor between Hasbro. And he was like, sorry, I'm leaving. Like, he, he was basically saying, like, You know, because they were like, look, if you wanted to go and do this and you want to come back, that's fine. But he said, he's like, I could always come back and be a wrestler, but when am I ever going to get to be a G.I. Joe? Okay. And he left, uh, and he left WWF and took a break and just started doing G.I. Joe for all. And he was in, he started off in this episode called Arise, Serpentor Arise, which was a, uh, I believe, five-part miniseries. It was the beginning of the second season. And, uh... He's the toughest Joe. Like, everyone in G.I. Joe looks up to him, and he's kind of like the the best of the best in their eyes. And he's actually uh, one of the parts that made up Serpentor. Oh, because Serpentor's made up of all he's, the strongest. He's made of, like, uh, Alexander the Great and Genghis Khan and all these, like, uh, conquerors. And Sergeant Slaughter. And Sergeant Slaughter. And he's made of partial Sergeant Slaughter's uh, DNA. He's the aggression, I think, of Sar- and strength of Sergeant Slaughter. Right. Sergeant Slaughter deals with guys that are dangerous. So, and he also kills Nemesis Enforcer. Yeah, and speaking of which, is that at the end of the movie, so now we're talking, let's talk about the end of the fucking movie. At the end of the movie, they throw... Uh, Pythona, Py- Py- what's yeah, Pythona, Pythona, and Nemesis Enforcer, who can fly, but they throw him into a pit and he dies because because he's so tired. I guess he crippled his wings or something. Yeah, okay, he beat so, the shit out of him. So like, yeah, he gives him a suplex. He, they're, he, they're dead. Yeah, he destroys um, Nemesis. Ga- uh, Gal- Galobulus <laughs> gets away. Yeah, and I guess um, Cobra Commander um, frees Falcon from a from a snake and fights the snake, and you don't see what happens to him. Yeah. So Cobra Commander maybe and Galobulus escape. And you never know what happens. Well, where are they going to go? They can't go in the Himalayas. They're cold-blooded. Oh, so they just died so they're in the... dead. Or they're dormant or whatever. That's how I say it. Okay. Do you think this movie is a good starting point for those who don't know anything about G.I. Joe? Um, it's my starting point. Uh, it, which is weird because it's technically like the finale. Uh, because the series, the whole series led up to this. And then after the movie came out, uh, Sunbow Animation lost the bid on the show and it went to Deke, which the Deke series is a whole, it's a super shit show, but it's really funny to watch. Uh, mm, Deke. Deke. Karen, I, I got a question for you. Yeah. The, the, you know, they say, oh, knowing is half the battle and the other half is red lasers and blue lasers. <laughs> I always wondered why do the good guys shoot red lasers and the bad guys shoot blue lasers. You would assume the good guys would shoot the blue. I don't know, actually. I always thought that was kind of weird, too. But it, it's like a Homestar Runner. <laughs> there was a, there was like a cheat. The I forget what the they were, but the bad guys were called blue laser. Which is weird because in Star Wars, the TIE fighters shoot green lasers and the good guys sh- the, shoot red lasers. Yeah. But their blasters and lightsabers are opposite. Oh, so what the fuck? I know what it is. What? It all comes back to uh, like Quake. You know, it's like red versus blue. Yeah. And the blue are the good guys. It's because of uh, the Cold War. 
Blue is seen as like America. Or wait, no, that makes no that's sense. The opposite. Then that's the opposite. What the fuck? I don't know. Well, no, wasn't it? Wasn't it the Red Army? I mean, don't quote me on this, but like, no, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is like the like the you know the bad guys are the Red Army, but the good guys have the blue red lasers, and then the bad guys have the blue. Yeah, that is weird. I don't know why. I never actually really thought into it. I was just kind of was like, ah. But it I was like, oh, was you want to be a red commie? We'll take these red lasers right maybe, up your yeah, ass. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's what it is. And they're yeah. like, you want to be a, a a blue, you know, cursing all the time and working blue? Well, we'll shoot you with a blue laser. Is that like your capitalist propaganda thing? I don't know. It's I like, you know, know when they say like when a comedian's like saying fucking shit all the time, like they're like, a wor- he has, doesn't have to work blue. Well, now I know a little bit about G.I. Joe and knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! So next episode is Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge.